What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you a interruption in my watch through for the Star Wars films to review a trilogy that I've been meaning to watch for some time in the form of the Robocop trilogy. And I should say rewatch because I haven't seen the films in many years. I think I'd only really seen the television cuts of the films. So I wanted to see how the basically unedited, unaltered, un-TV changed version of the films hold up and do the films in general overall hold up after all these years. And aside from some of the CGI effects and special effects of the films, the stories I think generally hold up now as far as what they were trying to do with a police officer they turned into a cyborg and their ultimate failures at using various minds and Robocop being the perfect combination of the traits needed for the whole Robocop program to work. So watching them now, the first thing that stands out is how um, brutal and bloody the films were. So for example, in the first film, when you have the shooting of um, Officer Murphy and his hand and then subsequent arm being blown off, being shot, at point blank range all through his body, being shot in the forehead, all being shown in the film. Much of that I don't remember having seen in the TV version aside from being shot, so it definitely stands out as being a brutal scene. Um, and then throughout the film, various times when he's being, for example in the second film when he's being cut in half and sort of torn apart as Robocop, and being dumped at the police headquarters, so things like that standing out as being uh, definitely a very um, brutal scene and then generally also as far as um, when they're testing the ED-209 at the beginning of the first film and how it shoots up the officer and continues to or the board member and continues to shoot him after being dead so that definitely stands out um, and then on the flip side it's consequently the continuing story about how, how OCP is trying to take over Detroit to make it a bigger and better and grander future but at the expense of kicking out the inhabitants so kind of an unchecked version of big business how it controls politics and their general and blatant um takeover of politics so it was kind of as a side story a talk on how on that kind of thing of how big business controls politics but overall, watching them now, um, things like that were definitely the underlying currents of the film. Um, as far as the CGI and graphics go, um, the robotics of Robocop and the stop motion animation of Ed 209 and the various other models with like Kane and all of that stand out um, is not being as smooth and would definitely uh, work better with things like CGI and smoothness. I think Robocop as being the titular character was the one that was most well done so you, it does um, bring a higher focus on him that they're trying to create a, a cyborg that mixes um, the human nervous system with robotics and then creating the same muscular movement having to allow or allowing him to be able to stand continue to stand upright on his own and walk around go on stairs and things like that the weightiness of the equipment in general so with the thumping sound definitely stands out so all of that i think was well done even though they did a remodel or a reboot of the film in i want to say like 2014 or something like that um that was more of a streamlined version, but I like that this was a good uh, version one of the film and um, or version one of Robocop, whereas Robocop 2014 becomes a um, version, a better version two than what they were trying to do with Ed 209. So it feels like oh, with OCP being the way they are, um, it was one of those things where um, the, the stories kind of really work well together, even as a standalone on the first, on just the first one, but then continuing into the second and third films was overall a good um, presentation of all of that, those various elements. Um, as far as best lines in the film, of course, dead or alive, you're coming to me or coming with me is the one that stands out. Um, the continuing struggle with his directives, while not necessarily a line was particular good, particularly good. 
In the second film, the best part of the film was when the uh, scientist lady finds out about all the directives that's bug been bogged down in Robocop's brain by OCP, and he electrocutes himself to reboot his system and get rid of all those directives, and the officers ask him, ask Murphy what's bothering him, and he says, Kane's bugging me. That definitely still stands out and as, is a very impactful line of... Um, his humanity so in general that was all very nice the silliest looking part about the film was in the second one again where they're showing um, Kane's um, central nervous system with his brain and eyes and all of that and it looked so much like the alien outline from Mars attack to the point where I got to thinking that were the aliens or for the, were the Martians from Mars Mars attacks based on the silhouette cane so I don't know that was kind of silly to me and kind of stood out the other thing that stood out of course is still the CGI of um, ed 209 so it would have been better or if they ever if they did or actually I'll probably have to watch the 2014 reboot of Robocop to see how they handled that or if they did have a different Ed 209 because I'm actually drawing a blank offhand as far as um, if they did have an Ed 209 in the film or what happened with that because I, I really am drawing a blank but um, in the these original films the Ed 209 definitely stands out even the Kane I think it's the Kane model of Robocop was okay but it I don't know, it just felt really, it felt slightly improved, like as if they were trying to fix it, but um, it still was okay. They were trying to still recreate something that they probably could have um, made or redone with CGI instead of making a whole new model or something like that. So I don't know, that was all strange. Um, and then of course, a, a final bit um, of silliness kind of along the lines of my whole thing with Mars Attacks is that the Ed 209 looks like or was now looks like one of those smart speakers whether it's like an Echo Dot or a Google Nest Home or whatever to the, where it's like a essentially just a smart speaker so I thought that was kind of silly so that's more like a retrospect where um you have I wonder if technology companies now kind of got their inspiration from the Ed 209 to make a speaker because it was basically just uh, a Robocop body and then a big speaker. So something that stands out a little bit there. Um, and finally, my other favorite line, um, I want to say is from the third film and it's not even the first two. It's um, the interaction between Robocop and the police captain where he asks, where the captain asks Robocop, you know, there's an, a, a, you know, there's a warrant for your arrest and Robocop simply replies with a slightly humorous tone. Yes. And then they both go about their day. So when you're watching Robocop 3, that's kind of the thing that stands out. I don't know if that one and then the one line about what's bugging you, Murph, are supposed to be like derivations on um, having different lines aside from dead or alive. Um, but it feels like dead or alive is supposed to be his Robocop's catchphrase. And then these other two lines are supposed to just show um, or to, to be the to continuation to show Robocop's humanity is still in his nervous system and still in the cyborg, even though OCP is telling everyone that it is not there. 